Alright, we're picking back up when we were solving this problem, so now I'm going to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 3. 5x equals 3. Divide both sides by 5. And I get x equals 3 fifths. And over here, I have x equals negative 1. So our solutions are going to be negative 1 and 3 fifths. We're going to move on to number 6. The first thing we're going to have to do is set this thing equal to 0. So if I'm going to subtract 8 plus, uh, subtract this from both sides, then, then I'm going to have x squared minus 6x minus everything we moved from the other side. Now that's set equal to 0. We have to simplify over here have x squared minus 6x, and this becomes, distribute that, negative 8x, and then minus x squared equals 0. Okay, then I'm going to have this x squared cancels this x squared, and I'm going to add like terms. I'm going to have negative 14x equals 0, and I'm solving. Divide both sides by negative 14, and this is just simply x equals 0. It's our only solution. We pretty much lost our quadratic up here when our x squares canceled each other out. So it's simply just an x equals zero. Alright, number seven. The first thing we always check for is we want to make sure this is set equal to zero. And it's a trinomial, but there's some fractions going on there. I want to take one step and get rid of the fractions. First of all, if I put everything over one, now all the terms are going to be fractions. We want to get rid of it by multiplying everything by a least common denominator. Least common denominator would be a 6. So I have to multiply every term in the problem by 6. And now I'm going to simplify term by term by term. So I'm going to look here in this first term. And I'm going to divide a 6 out of each of them. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. Now I'm going to have a 1 left over so I multiply it times z squared so that just becomes 1z squared which is z squared alright over 1 next I'm going to look at this term and I'm going to divide by 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 and I have a 3 well since I have a 3 left I'm going to say 3 and that's a negative 3z so don't forget negative and then I have a 3z left I move on to my next term I can't simplify 1 any further, so I just have 6 times negative 3 is a negative 18. And then over here, um, 1 doesn't simplify any further, so I have 6 times 0, which anything times 0 is just 0. Okay, now I have a quadratic, which it's a trinomial, 1, 2, 3 terms, so I can try my bottoms up method. It's set equal to 0, so I'm ready to start there. I'm looking for what multiplies to give me a negative 18, but it's going to subtract to give me a negative 3. 2 and 9, that couldn't get me a negative 3. What about a 3 and 6 gets me 18. Now I need it to subtract to give me a negative 3. So I'll figure out my factors. And then once I do, I put it over 1z, I split that, 1z and 1z, nothing simplifies, so I'm going to do from bottoms up, so I get z plus 3, and then z minus 6 equals 0, and now I'm ready to solve. To solve, we're going to use our zero product rule, and I say z plus 3 equals 0. And then I'll also do this one, which is z minus 6 equals 0. And I'm just solving for z in both of them. So we get z equals negative 3 is one answer. And z equals 6 is the other. So in my labs, plus it would be negative 3, whoops, positive 6. Careful negative 3 and we said positive 6 and that's a comma alright same thing in number 8 first thing we want to do is let's get rid of the fractions and then we need to make sure it's set equal to 0 before we start actually solving this problem so we gotta clean it up so to say 
Our least common denominator is going to be a 30. Okay. Now, if I'm going to simplify the first one, divide by 30, divide by 30, so I'm left with 1 y squared. So that's just going to become y squared equals, in this next term, I want to divide by 15, and I get 1. Divide by 15, and I get 2. So now I have a 2 and a y left. 2y. And in my last term, I'm going to divide by 2. Divide by 2, and I'm left with 15 times 1, which is just 15. Okay, we got rid of the fractions. Now we want to move everything over to the left side and set this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 2y and move it over here and I'm also going to move this 15 to the other side so I'm going to also subtract 15 and I like to put it in order so I'll put my y squared term first minus 2y minus 15 and then this side gets our 0 okay there's no fractions it's set equal to 0 now we need to factor this, and this is a trinomial, so we use our bottoms up method, which is going to be what multiplies to give us negative 15, but it's going to subtract to give us a negative 2. Alright, 3 and 5 was always the first ones that come to my mind for that. 3 and 5 is 15. I need it to be a negative 2. So the negative goes there. Double check. Make sure it multiplies to give you negative 15. Subtracts to give you negative 2. It does. Then we take whatever coefficients here. 1y. And we put 1y. 1y. Nothing simplifies. So I now have writing from bottoms up. y plus 3 equals. Getting ahead of myself. I have y plus 3. From bottoms up here, I have y minus 5, and that's set equal to 0. And now I want to use the zero product rule and set this one equal to 0 and solve. And then set this one equal to 0 and solve. So I have y equals negative 3. And then over here on the red side, I'm going to have y equals 5. Okay, let's look at number 9. Uh, we look at number 9, and we see it's set equal to 0, and we see all these are already factored out. So the factor work has been done for me, even though there's more than 2. It doesn't matter how many are there. Um, they're all factored, so it's ready to go. Our zero product rule just allows us to break these apart one at a time. Set this one equal to 0 and solve. Then it allows me to... Set this one equal to zero and solve, and then our third one. Okay, and I'm going to go back and just do the calculations and solve these linear equations. So x equals negative 2, x equals 7, and then in the next one, we're going to have divide by 3, and we're going to have x equals 8 thirds. So in our my math labs, our answer is going to be negative 2, 7, and 8 thirds. And it shouldn't matter what order you put these in if you have all of them and make sure you have the correct signs with them. Okay? So next, we're going to look at number 10. First thing we said we want to do is we want to set this thing equal to 0 before we can solve. So we're going to look at that one probably on the next video since we're running out of time on this one. So I'll pick back up on the next video with number 10.